Luke, congratulations. This train you're on rolls on to another stop. Dominant performance over Johnny Clay. And just sum up the emotions for us. Yeah. Felt I played really decent. To be to be honest, I asked Dan after I Dan Wilson after I played the game. I said, "Was that good?" I, did, I wasn't sure. I felt like it was decent. I just didn't know if it was really good or, you know, it was a lot better than I thought it was. But you know, when you average over 100, that's all. That's all you can ask yourself. That makes you a tough player to beat. And uh, you know, I think my my scoring, my finishing was really really good at the start. At the back end of the game, I kind of, you know, maybe just didn't step on the the gas a lot, and I should have just kept on going. Missed a couple of darts to win, didn't I? But uh, yeah, you know, you can't be too perfect. I'm just happy to win too. I don't care what our average in the end, really, as long as I win this for the man's. I mean, this is a compliment here. Yesterday it was an eye catchy showbiz tons off an average, but today it didn't feel like last night. I mean, we were like, oh, it was 103. Mm. So you're making these big averages look ordinary in the manner that you're doing them now as well. That must please you as well. Yeah, I think it's what the, everyone expects of me. You know, you expect me to hit the 100, 708 averages all the time. Unfortunately, they don't come all the time. You can't be perfect, you know, unfortunately. I wish I could. But yeah, when you hit the 100, 200, 300, sometimes it looks like, I think I used to, you know, watch like Phil and Michael in their heyday and you'd see them at 103 and you'd think, oh, I don't look nothing special. And then you'd see it, oh, actually, it's pretty decent. So yeah, I think that that's just a compliment to the player. So yeah, I mean, for me, I'd love to love averaging high and I love having the big averages and the loads of 180s and the big finishes, but. You know, as, as a whole, all that matters is as long as you win. You know, I'd rather win with a 91 than lose with 110. I know you like to play this down, but there is this aura around you now. We hear other players, when they sit here, talking about, oh, Luke, he's a machine, or we're going to have to beat Luke. Richie to... Eddowes didn't think I was a machine, no, he's, did he? He's, he's <laughs> I had him back for that he, one. He, he's the only one. Everyone else is like, oh, no, I'm, I'm probably going to have to beat Luke to do this. Oh, I, I, when, I, when I got Luke and that. And do you feel that you've almost got this advantage now over players where they're overthinking playing you? I hope so. <laughs> I hope so. It gives me an advantage, but of course, yeah, I think some people relish the, the opportunity of playing the best in the world. You know, when you're playing the likes of me, Luke, Michael, Rob Cross, Nick Aspen, all these type, you know, Michael Smith, Casey Price, you know, when you play these type of players, if you're not in the top 16 in the world, say, you know, you relish the opportunity that you can create a bit of a news line, a bit of a headline for yourself. And, you know, Richie Eddowes is doing that for himself this weekend. Uh, he's been brilliant. So, yeah, I think it's sometimes people relish it. Some people don't flourish under the pressure. But, uh, you know, I, I, I love pressure. Sometimes it really works out in my favour. There's the occasion where it gets the better of you, and it can. I'm, I'm human sometimes when you're under it and you're under a lot of pressure. It can, it can be hard. But, you know, a lot of the times, as you've seen, when I'm under pressure, I seem to bite back and it seems to do me well. But, yeah, I think there's a lot of players out there that really relish it. Um, so I don't think anybody would be fearing me. Uh, I think it would just be you know, a great opportunity for them to beat me. But if I keep playing at this level, then it's going to take a, a top four to beat me. And that's all I ask of myself. There's another potential record on the horizon that you'll get etching closer to that two million bracket on your merit. No player has ever gone past that. Is that something that you, you look on in like different kind of records, not just numbers on the board? Yeah, I don't look at that, to be honest. I think there was a player this weekend a good friend of mine that actually said it I won't name it but he was like I'd love to see you get to the 2 million uh, someone that was in the tournament quite recently so he was like I'd love to see you get to the 2 million so I think there's a, there's a lot of people that would love to see it I think it would be a, a great stepping stone for the game but of course I think that that's because of the, the prize fund increase that the PC have you know, implicated over the last 5 years um, but yeah I mean if I made that 2 million mark on the rankings, and that, that just shows I'm dominant two, two, two years, to be honest, that, that would be exceptional. But I feel like I'm going to have to at least win two majors to do that, or even I'd have to uh, make a world final for, to do that. But that, that'd be nice, but of course I don't look into things too much. I'm, I'm here to just you know, play my best, win as much as I physically can, like I said yesterday, and you know, hopefully it's enough. Luke, congratulations. Thank you. Luke, you said that when you came off stage of Afghan Dawson, was that good? But what is good for Luke Humphries now? What, what, what would have been the correct answer to say, yes, that was good? Uh, he probably just said you won. That's all that matters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but like, I think you get caught in this era now that so many players average above 100 that you try and, like, um, you try and be perfect, you try and hit these massive averages and impress everyone. But really, in the reality, it doesn't really matter. You know, as long as you win, that, that, that is the, the real key. Um, like I just said, I'd rather win with a 91 average than 110 and lose. So you know, I think sometimes I'm trying to be too perfect and I try not to make mistakes. But you will. There's a couple of shots in that game, if I remember rightly, I hit fit five, but I then followed up with two triple twenties or at least one. And that that that's the that's the thing that separates me. Sometimes if I hit a five, I follow it with two single twenties. If I'm following it with a treble, then a, 
or two trebles, that's, that's why I'm at my dangerous best. You know, if I'm making mistakes, I'm still following up with two trebles. You know, that's when I know I'm playing well. So, you know, I, I felt in a, in a decent shape in that game. It felt good. It felt comfortable. Uh, and I hope I wake up tomorrow with a good night's sleep and I feel the same way I've done the last two days. I know that we always seem to talk about it in these long tournaments, but you made your name on the European Tour. And of course, you won the Grand Slam of Arts as well. There are a lot of people in this tournament who are in uncharted territory entering TV quarterfinals. But not only a quarterfinal, one way, it could be a really, really long day. How crucial is, is that going to be? And do you think the inexperience that other people have in this tournament in that scenario could really affect them? I mean, if you, I'm going to answer it honestly, yes. I think for me, it's experience does does tell. I learnt that in my first um, when I played the UK Open against James in like 2021, 2022, whenever it was. Um, you know, I was asking people like, "What do I do?" I won the quarterfinal against you. Like, what do I do? Do I go sleep? Do I eat? Do I not eat? You know, I, I was inexperienced, but I think you just have to learn and learn from the experience. Um, and you know, the regime that I do works for me. It's my own reg regime, what I do. Um, the long days, like last week, it was incredibly tough. I felt a lot really tired in the final, but I managed to, you know, pull out of the bay against Kim in, in the Czech Darts Open final. But they are long days. They're really, really tough, especially if you're on first in the afternoon. And that becomes like a 12-hour day almost, uh, or longer. So, yeah, for me, I, I know what to do. There's a lot of players that ain't in this territory a lot. But, uh, yeah, I think experience for me can, can help me tomorrow. You are the only top 10 seed left in the tournament, but when you're in a tournament, are you aware of everything that goes on when the big names go out? For example, were you aware that you were the only top seed, uh, top 10 seed left? No, I wasn't actually. That just means not a lot can catch me now. I keep pulling away, keep standing at number one, but yeah, I wasn't, I wasn't aware of that to be honest, but that just proves that if I don't win it this weekend, there's a great opportunity for someone else to win. And uh, you know, a lot of people probably are going to expect me to win this weekend, but it's never a foregone conclusion. I, I've still got to play well, I've still got to go on and win it. Um, I know I've played well the last couple of weeks, but I've still got to turn up tomorrow and be at my best. If I'm not, then it's going to be a great opportunity for someone else to win. So, you know, we see it at the Grand Prix with Mike. I thought he was absolutely brilliant. So, you know, I know I'm going to be the favourite, of course, but there's a great opportunity for someone tomorrow. And uh, that makes it an exciting day. And I think everyone will enjoy the fact that there could be a new winner tomorrow. But of course, I'll be hoping that it's me for the new European champion. But I have to work incredibly hard, I have to play well to do it. Cheers, Luke. Thank you. Well done.